Romagna, a living history of Marie Curie. Finally, after processing over a ton of pitch blend in the cauldron, after performing several thousand fractional crystallizations, I was able to isolate a very small quantity, about the weight of a single straight pin, a very pure salts of radium. We never guessed at the beginning that the radium would prove to be over a million times more radioactive than uranium, and therefore was less than a millionth of a part of the original peach blend. On 28th of May, 1902, I determined atomic weight, 225. 45 months had gone by, almost four years. I had isolated a pure sample of radium salts, a tenth of a gram. As our human species progresses through generations of time and space into the 21st century and beyond, our lives have been forever changed by the singular brilliance of scientists such as Galileo, Isaac Newton, Thomas Edison, and Albert Einstein. Yet when we place any giant of science on a pedestal, we lose touch with the human behind the intellect. Now, newly married, I continued my research on magnetism. I took further coursework in support of my doctorate, and I studied for my teaching certificate for girls' secondary school. And I learned to cook. <laughs> the most difficult of chemical experiments. If we reduce scientists' deeds to a set of equations or a list of discoveries, we forfeit the opportunity to be inspired by their passion and integrity. Radium is element. It belongs to the earth. Radium is going to be used to cure painful diseases. It seems impossible to take advantage of that. Their social conscience and vision. It is hard to think that after so many centuries of development, the human race still does not know how to resolve conflict except by violence. Such is the case with Madame Marie Curie, Arguably the most famous woman scientist, Marie Curie changed the world in which we live through her discovery of radium and radioactivity while opening the doors of science to women worldwide. In a moment, we will meet Susan Marie Frunchak, creator and presenter of this docudrama. You'll also learn how this program and its message can benefit your organization. But first, let's hear from Madame Marie Curie, or as she was known in her childhood, Vanya Skorovska. First, let me ask you, what if you were not allowed to speak your language? Here in Paris, we speak French. Uh, for those of you visiting from America, your native language may be English. What if tomorrow you were told you may not speak your language anymore? As a girl, I was not supposed to speak my native language of Polish in public. My country of Poland had been torn apart with pieces taken by the countries of Austria, Russia, and Prussia. But the Polish people are very strong. They are strong in their hearts. We have never given up hope of having our own country again. The part of Poland where I was born was under Russian rule. As a child, we were not supposed to learn Polish history or write Polish language. But our teachers were very brave. They taught us Polish history in secret. And when the Russian inspector came, bzz, 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 the electric bell would buzz. Quickly, two girls would collect the Polish history books and hurry them into the dormitory. We each took out our embroidery. We had a sampler on which we make a buttonhole. And the teacher read to us from her book of Russian folk tales. In walked the inspector in his blue tunic and yellow pantaloons. We all knew that if the teachers were found out, they would certainly be dismissed, or worse. After the January uprising of 1863, less than five years before I was born, 
Over 100,000 Polish people were sent into exile, many to Siberia or, or killed as punishment. This one-woman drama exposes the struggles and triumphs of Marie Skłodowska Curie, an academically impassioned, vehemently private, fervently Polish scientist, mother, and teacher. From political oppression to scientific prominence, Marie Curie takes you on a profound, humorous, magical journey, revealing the human side of science and the joy of discovery. Because women in Warsaw were forbidden education beyond high school, the young Maria Skłodowska sought to study science at the Sorbonne in Paris. Thus began her unusual romance with Pierre Curie. Later that spring, I wrote to my sister Helena that Monsieur Curie had sent me a billet doux, a love letter. It was a copy of his paper <laughs> on symmetry in physical phenomena, symmetry in an electric field and in a magnetic field. He, he signed it to Mademoiselle Skłodowska with the respect and friendship of the author, Pierre Curie. My sister said he should have sent me flowers. <laughs> uh, but this was much more precious. This showed that he valued who I am. By the time the Curies knew radium was a potent substance, the ends of their fingers began to peel. But perhaps this effect could be put to beneficial use. Well, the next question was, if radium affected healthy tissue in this way, what effect would it have? on unhealthy tissue. Oh, this was of great concern to Pierre because his mother had died of cancer just a few months before I started to study uranium rays. The Curies experimented and worked with the medical community to establish the first successful treatments of cancer. Thus, radium therapy, sometimes called Curie therapy, was born in France. Author, presenter, Susan Marie Franchek. Marie Curie was the first woman to earn a doctorate in the sciences in Europe. She was the first woman to earn a Nobel Prize, the first person to earn a second Nobel Prize, something that didn't happen again for another 60 years. She was the first woman to teach at the Sorbonne in its 600-year history. Poet Jack Collum wrote, Front Jack's Curie portrayal last night was strangely gripping. The words very intelligently composed, history, so tightly interwoven with personal expression. Her acting style, full of hesitations, the words writing a graph of emotion. One was immersed in the story and the person. She didn't do these things for the sake of womanhood. She did it because she was a person fascinated by science. And she did these things even when the circumstances surrounding them were often very stressful. After the funeral, the government offered pensions for the wife and the children of Pierre Curie. I declined. I said, I am young and healthy. I can earn my keep and that of my children. But how? I had also Pierre's father to support, as he supported us. I, I don't know what my daughters would have done without his love and care. A month later, the University de Paris offered me Pierre's teaching position at the Sorbonne. I wrestled for some days with this decision. I did not know if lectures of mine could be worthy of the reputation of Pierre. But I also thought I owed it to him to try. I accepted. I used the summer months to prepare my lectures. I studied his notes in great detail. The final entry in his book was, when one considers the progress that has been made in physics in the last 10 years, one is surprised at the advances in our ideas concerning electricity and matter. And there it ended. But what would he have said? 
on 5th of November, I entered the lecture hall. This was very difficult for me. I have never enjoyed public attention. And now, in addition to the students, there were the members of the press and society ladies in their fancy hats to feast with their curiosity. And then they stood. And then they applauded. It was almost more than I could bear. Finally, they ceased. I, I tried to find my voice. I said, when one considers the progress that has been made in physics in the last 10 years, one is surprised at the advances in our ideas concerning electricity and matter. And I went on. For over 20 years, Story Smith Susan Marie Franchak has brought literature to life, created stories from thin air, and honed personal experience into tales worth telling again and again. She plays in theaters, corporations, schools, libraries, and festivals internationally. Her original narrative scripts and stories have been heard on Colorado Public Radio, Morning Edition, and at corporate conferences. In dramatizing the life of Maria Skorowska Curie, Susan Marie pays homage to their shared Polish heritage. Marie Curie's tenacity in part inspired Susan to major in engineering, where she worked for 14 years before pursuing full-time writing and acting. She was a physicist, a chemist. It was discovering these fundamental physical and chemical properties of this uncanny material that inspired her most. Susan Marie has always viewed both science and art as valid outlets for creativity. It is her aim to reveal the human behind the scientist while placing Madame Curie's life and accomplishments in a memorable historic context. I want to honor her Polish heritage, her love of family, and her love of science. For decades, Marie Curie has been the top role model for women in science, but she is also a role model for focused work, mentoring, and altruism in any field. Response to this program has drawn high praise from a wide spectrum of audiences, chemists and physicists, university students, Polish Americans, Francophiles, women, single mothers, teachers, historians, and humanists, all feel strong links to this story. Manya creates bridges between history, science, and humanity. Whether looking at Marie within her historical context or through the lens of a new millennium, this is a life that challenges our assumptions about what one person can achieve and the responsibilities of science. I had isolated very pure salts of radium, a tenth of a gram. 